Hey Gordon, this is a net video. Hope you enjoy it. Just the other day I was talking to my good friend Carlos from Retro Upgrade and he has this pet peeve project where he's constructing a PCB to replace a keyboard membrane in a Sinclair Spectrum. Well, it's a long story. So we were discussing possibilities to get away from this horrible membrane thing and all the data buses going into the thing. And at one point I said, okay, I need schematics for this. I can't do this out of the top of my head. I need some schematics. As you probably know, the Spectrum is an old one. I think 30 years of age now. Uh, now nowadays, these schematics are open source and you can get them on the internet. I have the issue for a circuit diagram over here and this is a complete computer. What Sir Clive did back in the days there, brilliant, because so little hardware for a lot of bang there. What I especially was interested in, let me zoom in a bit here and move up over here. This is a keyboard interface, keyboard two over here. Probably you can't read this when you're on a phone. Believe me, this over here is keyboard. And um, so the whole mess is connected between IC2, CPU on the right side, some LS157 in the middle, and the ULA that does all the keyboard blah, blah, blah on there. And let me tell you, when I looked at this, I thought, man, I'm getting dizzy. Only by looking at this, this is horrible, horrible. And remember, this is an 8-bit system. So eight data lines, 16 address lines from the CPU, this is all. And this is already a mess. I can't tell anything apart. I can tell you, okay, there's an A0 line somewhere and then I get lost between all these mess in the middle. Sadly, I can't draw on this right now. First thing I thought, okay, let me redraw this. And so I got out a graphics program and I converted this into that. What I did here, I removed all the not necessary lines for the keyboard interface because we were only looking at the keyboard interface. And yeah, this is way more readable, of course, but um, it took me about half an hour to redraw this just by removing lines, just fiddling around with lines, just to get to a point where I can say, okay, now I have a basic understanding what's going on here. But from my readability point of view, this is still horrible. Figuring out where D, D1 comes from, by the way, not possible. I know it's going to pin A2 on the IC3, but I have no idea what this is. So I transferred this to Easy EDA. Let's have a look. Yeah, that doesn't really help. <laughs> it's still, from my point of view, it's still a garbled mess. Because all these crossings over here don't tell me anything. Well, at least now when I hover with my mouse over one of these lines, there's a highlight. So I can tell, okay, this must be A14. It goes to the ULA and comes from the CPU. CPU on the right, ULA on the, on the left. But I still have to look very, very closely what's going where. And uh, you see, now nowadays, uh, this is A11. And it doesn't highlight this line. I have no idea why it doesn't do that. But it doesn't. From an analytical point of view, this is still horrible. Trying to figure out where anything goes... If you have this on paper, this won't do the highlight highlighting things. And please remember, this is only the address bus. I only highlighted out the address bus. There's no power in here. There's no data bus. This is still very reduced what we see here. So is there a way to make this more human readable so that we can understand what's going on there? To me, there is. As, as I said, I get dizzy with these old schematics that have this crazy drawing with hundreds of lines crossing over all over the place. I prefer this view. Oh no, all the lines are gone. Where have they gone? Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is how I prefer my schematics, indeed. These strange pointy things are net labels. So, what I did here, I started the CPU because CPU central processing unit, this is where everything starts from, you know. So what I did here, I simply went, went along and there are all the address lines over here, the data lines over here. So I simply renamed these things. Well, let me add one here. Let me remove this one. Oh. And what I'm doing here is I'm being lazy because I'm simply copying this one and pasting this one in. And giving this the right name because we don't want to have A12 on the same thing here. So A11. So now A11 is this line. So for now I want to connect anything to A11. I simply use the same label on whatever I want to connect it to. So for example, if I put A11 over here onto this thing, 
Now, this line is connected to A11. It's the same as I would have drawn a line down here. Without the crossing, without loads of lines that are messing around anywhere. And with this information, I can tell, okay, this is A11. I can even use the find thing over here. If I put in A11, object not found. Perfect. Net label. It shows me where is my A11 connected. Connected. There is connected. It's connected over there. It's connected over here. Easy EDA has a even better tool for finding where everything goes, because it has this thing over here. This is find similar objects. So if I go for kind, and I want to have my net labels, and I want to have the current sheet, and I want to have the same as say A11. Find this now. And it points out, there's an A11, you see that it turned red, A11 is over there, there's another one in red. So um, now I know where all those these goes. And again, imagine there are lines connected between these points over here, without there being lines crossing all over the place and making everything unreadable. So this is a good thing. There are cases when you want to put some more information on this. For example, you see over here, I have A A0 to A6 on the ULA over here. And this isn't the di direct address line. This goes through this multiplexes, I think they are. So I needed to clarify here because these go to the ULA A0 point. You could go the same route over here and say, okay, this is Z80 A0. But for things like the address bus, there's only one real address bus on a computer. Or the data bus, again, only one real data bus. There can only be one. You simply go for, see over here, data, zero, data bus, data bus. So I know where everything goes. I give you that. This takes a bit of getting used to this. But after you get used to this, this is so much more easy to, to read. And one thing I can do now, uh, when I want to, for example, this register, this uh, shift register over here is a bit wonky. So I can move this old stuff without having to drag along 500 lines I drawn and have probably drawn badly. Now I can do things like this and uh, I can draw something like this and give it a name, give it a function, disc functional description. Call it, for example. So now this thing has a functional description that helps me read the whole schematics. Nice. So I hope this clarified a bit why I'm such a huge fan of nets. Nets help you a lot of making anything more readable. For me, this is the way to go. I know for small circuits, this is maybe overkill, maybe not. This depends on how you're looking at these schematics. And I normally look at them as functional blocks. So drawing something like this over here, where I say, okay, this is the mux for the ULA, helps me a lot to understand this. Not today and not tomorrow, but when I look at schematics, say, half a year from now, this is a way to be very descriptive with your schematics, I'd say. Well, as always, we can discuss this in the comment selection below. And um, yeah, this is a short one, but uh, I just wanted to show this out. And Gordon asked about, why do you do this next thing all the time? So here it is. Hope you learned something today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.